Hi, this is Roisin from Sweet Eve Signs and today I'm bringing you part one of how to design this 3D mermaid shadow box letter. Make sure to hit the subscribe button up in the right hand corner so you can be the first to get a notification for when part two of this tutorial is available. So we're going to start with our 3D letter. I will put the information in the description box for this image number and you can find the image sets there. So first we're going to ungroup the letters and we're going to delete the inner part as that will not be required. You can resize your 3D letter or number by using the main part of the letter as a guide. That will let you know how big or how small your 3D letter will end up. Then I'm going to change the colour. This is optional but it helps me to visualise the project a bit better. Then I'm going to hide the tabs. This will just help give me more space to work with the images that I'm going to be using throughout. And I'm also going to hide the back of the 3D letter or number. Now we're going to move on to the shadow box. I will put the information in the description for this image. What we need to do is we need to duplicate the main part of our letter or our number. And then we need to hide this. Now we're going to unlock this image and resize it, ensuring that the bottom and the top are roughly the same height. Align at the bottom and on the left, and this will make sure that everything is in the right position. If you did send this to the back, now send it to the front and ungroup. What we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom layer and the E, and then we're going to slice them. Move the slice part to one side and then we're going to grab the original E and the part that we sliced out and we'll weld them back together and then delete any spare parts. Repeat this process for each layer. What this effectively does is that it ensures that the shadow box elements that go inside of the 3D letter or number are exactly the same as the original part of the 3D letter or number. So when you're moving them across, you will need to be sending them to the back and aligning and centre, just to make sure that everything is as you want it to be. Now you can see on this one, there is a slight part that's not connected. And we're going to use our contour and delete any loose sections. There is also a part of the E and the ship that are not connected. So I'm just going to take a shape from the left hand shapes panel and close up any gaps. This is really important to make sure that every element of this 3D shadow box is a full shape because you're going to be able to layer it more easily that way. Centre the back and align and centre horizontally. And also align at the bottom. Unhide your main letter and then we're going to actually, for this one, I can see that there's quite a big gap that I don't quite like. So I'm going to repeat the process at the middle of this letter. This is obviously optional and, you know, depending on what letter or number you use, you may need to mess around, but you don't want to have any massive gaps. I'm just going to change the colour of my elements to make sure that they're all different. Then I'm going to duplicate my E again and I'm going to go off to, up to the offset tool and I'm going to use the inset. Make sure that you have your squared option on for corners and then you're going to slice. This is going to give us the frame of our E or 3D letter or number. Change the colour so that you can clearly see how it would all fit together. Now when I arrange this and I place my 3D letter frame on top, I could see that there might be some possible overlaps. So I just made it slightly bigger with an offset of 0.04. I welded these together and deleted the original and changed the colour back. It's going to be slightly bigger than my 3D letter but that's absolutely fine. Now we're going to grab the shell, which I will put in the description. And we're going to resize it.
and just position where you think it looks best on your 3D letter or shape and change the colours to suit the colours of your project. Now I'm going to duplicate the back layer, send it to the back, align, centre and group. Now I'm going to grab a circle from the shapes panel on the left hand side and this is what is going to be the base of my shaker. So I need to resize this to 1.6, change the colour and then duplicate. And then I need to make the other one 1.75. Depending on the size of your shaker, you will need to work out the sizes maybe differently. I'm going to duplicate the first one Align, center and group and slice and then change the color. This is just going to give me the frame that will go on top of my shaker. Now we're going to grab the coral and we're going to resize it to position where we want it to be and change the colors. Duplicate the back part only of the coral and center the back. Align, center and group and then duplicate. So just mess around with the positioning of where you want things to sit until you're happy with where they're placed. Now we're going to grab our mermaid tail And we're going to delete the right part of the tail that is no longer required. We're just going to resize this and rotate it to sit where we would like it to and then change the colors. I'm then going to duplicate the back part of the tail, center the back, align center and group. Now we're going to grab the bubbles. As always, the information will be in the description box. We're going to bring it into the design space and then we're going to delete the pink part because that won't be required. Then we're going to make it slightly bigger so that it's easier to work with and use our contour and hide everything except for one of the bubbles and change the color. We're going to duplicate this three more times and just resize and position until we're happy with it. Then we're going to group these all together and apply an offset of 0.08 and change the color. That will be our acetate. Now we're going to work with the text. We're going to use Hey Marilyn text, which is a Cricut Design Space text. And we're going to type out our name. We're going to make it slightly bigger ungroup it and move all the letters together so that they're much closer and then group. Now we're going to make it even bigger. The reason being is it helps us have a more intricate offset. I'm going to apply an offset of 0.04 and I'm going to delete the original. This is going to give us a slightly thicker word which is easier to cut. Now I'm going to apply an offset of 0.15 three times, align center and group, and then resize the word. And then just go ahead and change the colors. I'm going to duplicate the back layer of the word, send to the back, align center and group. Now when I position this, I want to make sure that the bottom of the tail is hidden. So I may need to rotate it slightly to get it in the right position. And then I'm going to group everything and duplicate. And using my right hand panel, I'm going to duplicate the main part of the letter and change the color. This is going to be our acetate or our mylar. Send it to the back. Then on the duplicated layer, go ahead and delete the, all the shadow box elements and the bubbles. You can do this using the right hand panel. Then we're going to go ahead and weld this together. 
This is going to give us the frame which shows us where to put all of our elements. Now let's send this to the back and just change the colours to make sure that we're happy with all of them and that there is lots of different contrasts and textures of the card that we're going to use. And that's your 3D letter done. Make sure to subscribe for the assembly video and if you found this helpful please make sure to like and comment. And while you're waiting for it to land, why not watch some of these other tutorials linked up here in the right. Also, please be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye bye.